Three years ago, I decided to make a toy. Some of my friends were making video games, but I wanted to make something physical. I see people doing such amazing things on the internet, so I wanted my toy to be the ultimate toy. It had to be big and have lots of moving parts. Except I'm a graphic designer. I can sketch out my ideas, but I didn't know anything technical or like how to make things move. My initial instinct was to outsource everything I didn't know, and, but I realized I'll end up not learning a single thing. I decided then that regardless of how long and hard this was going to take me, I'm going to have to learn 3D printing, 3D modeling, electronics, and programming from scratch. And to help me overcome those steep learning curves and to be excited to work on this every single day, I knew it had to be full of the things that I love. I grew up listening to the stories my grandfather told of his time as a mechanic in the Royal Air Force, and I've always loved military model kits, miniature war games, science fiction films, and anime. Right from the start, I knew I wanted to make a military vehicle toy. I imagined a world where air power never evolved, and tanks just getting bigger and bigger, eventually ending up like fortresses, walking over the battlefield, guns pointed in all directions. I guess a toy with a violent theme is not the best thing for our times, but like many boys, that's what I grew up loving. So I got to have lots of guns in my toy. Like the B-17 Flying Fortress bomber, the belly gunner's ball turret has always fascinated me. The Millennium Falcon in Star Wars and all those airships in Miyazaki's Castle in the Sky have used this idea of a 180-degree firing gun in such cool ways, so I knew I had to have ball turrets in my toy. So I started with something I knew absolutely nothing about. I figured that in order to get things to move, I need to know something about electronics. So I signed up for a two-day workshop on the Arduino. So this is a simple computer that allows code to control electronics like uh, LED lights and motors. Everybody else at the workshop were pretty serious people, except for this one guy, Rick, who also wanted to make toys. Rick gave me the next piece of the puzzle. He owned a 3D printer and taught me everything I needed to get started. I quickly 3D modeled some simple legs and printed them with Rick's help. Combining that with what I picked up at the workshop, I made a set of legs that failed miserably. Once physics was applied to them, they could barely stand, let alone walk. So I had to completely redesign my toy from scratch. For the next few months, all of my free time and weekends were spent watching YouTube videos, reading blogs and forums to learn whatever I could. And after many broken parts and short circuits, I finally had my first breakthrough. My legs finally walked the way I wanted them to. It took me 18 months to learn and build my toy. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you codename Colossus. Made out of 435 3D printed and laser cut pieces, I had to make a spreadsheet just to keep track of everything. I wanted to push what was possible with 3D printing, and not just to look good on the outside, I wanted people to be able to explore. So all the little doors and windows can be opened to reveal little instrument panels, little people inside, the bolts and nuts, like what you see climbing up the inside of the Statue of Liberty. Of course, it also moves. The turret panning is code I stole from security cameras. And this sensor here is the same sensor you'll find in automatic flushing toilets. Oh, yeah, that, all that rattling, 
are vibration motors that's attached to all the machine guns. It's taking a while. Get the smoke. I'm still working on this. I'm not sure if uh, this will work, but uh, can be a bit temperamental. Oops. Uh, I guess it's, mm, it's being a bit shy. I'm still, yeah, still working on that. So when I was done, <laughs> thank you. When I was done, I put up a YouTube video so my friends could see what I've been up to for the last you know, few months. And I went to bed with 11 hits. I woke up the next day, there was 1,000 hits. Apparently, Rick had posted the link on Reddit. That first day, two 3D printing blocks featured my toy. And over the course of the week, bigger and more mainstream websites started featuring it. A thousand hits became a hundred thousand hits. And I realized I wasn't on this journey anymore, alone anymore. Friends have asked me, how do I have the stamina to spend all of my free time and all of my weekends for a year and a half on one single project? I guess, to me, it wasn't 18 months of doing the same thing, it was more like two weeks of coding, you know, two weeks of electronics, two weeks of 3D modeling. And while I truly struggled, I never once was bored. After all, I am bring, making my imaginary world real. I haven't quite decided what I will bring to life next, but one thing I do know is that I can learn whatever I need to accomplish it. Thank you.